Okay, we have now moved on to the next slide. It's slide number nine. And let us practice a few problems with figuring out the direction, which direction the equilibrium or the reaction is going to proceed if we know the quotient, the value of the quotient Q, and we're comparing it to the equilibrium constant value. We have given the Kp for this equilibrium. So if I have N2 as a gas plus 3H2 as a gas going to 2NH3 as a gas, if I have this reaction, I know that the Kp for, so the value for the equilibrium constant for this reaction at 450 degrees Celsius. Note that I, I am specifying the temperature because K differs with temperature, so if I change the temperature, K will also change. So at this particular temperature, the value for K is 4.52 times 10 to the minus fifth. Now, for each of the mixtures listed here, indicate whether the mixture is at, at equilibrium. If not, then indicate the reaction, the direction, whether towards product or reactants, in which the mixture must shift to achieve equilibrium. So let's look at part A. I have, for part A, I have 98 atmospheres for NH3, 45 for N2, and 55 for for H2. First of all, we need to write, I know it's balanced, but we need to write the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. So let's do that. And it's, that's not going to change for all of these reactions. So Kp, and because they're gases and I'm given pressures in atmosphere, I'm going to write it as the partial pressures, pressures of the gas. So the pressure of NH3 raised to the second power divided by the pressure of nitrogen raised to the first power times the pressure of H2 raised to the third power. Notice that this is the same. It doesn't matter that I'm writing it in pressure. It's, it would be the same if I wrote it in concentration. I'd have concentration of NH3 raised to the second power concentration of N2 multiplied by concentration of H2 raised to the third power. It's just that I have pressures instead of molar concentrations. Okay, so all we have to do is plug in the numbers for the first. So Kp is equal to my NH3 raised, so 98 atmosphere squared. Nope, sorry, I had to sneeze. <laughs> and then N nitrogen is 45 times H2, which is 55, so 55 raised to the third power. If you do this math, you should get 1.3 times 10 to the minus 3. And now we're comparing, this is my Q value. I shouldn't have put Kp there because it's not I don't know if it is at equilibrium or not, so I will write Q. <coughs> Excuse me. So my Q comes out to be 1.3 times 10 to the minus 3. Now let's compare it to the K value. Which one is larger, this number or this number? Well, if you see, this is a larger number, so Q, in this case, Q is larger than K. Let's go over here and let's see why. The, what does that tell me? If Q is larger than K, that means that this number, the top number, has to be larger than these two numbers to give me a large, a large Q. How do I make Q smaller? Well, I make Q smaller by decreasing this and increasing these. The only way to do that is if I break down my NH3, so I decrease the pressure of NH3 by breaking it down to make more, more reactants, the beginning, right? 
and in that will increase the pressures of these two gases, so it will increase the bottom number, the denominator. I have a smaller number divided by a larger number, which would lower the Q to bring it closer to K, which means that I have to go in the reverse direction. I have to proceed towards reactants. So the reaction is going to proceed. This, in this instance, for A, it's going to proceed towards the left or reactants. Now let's look at the next example. I have B, Q will be 57 squared divided by 143 times, okay, I don't have any H2 left, so I used up all H2. So this is going to be Q for this reaction. If you do this math, you will get 22.7 for a value of Q. Okay, so now my Q, once again, is much, much larger than my equilibrium constant expression. Same here, except it's much, much larger than K. Which means that to be able to lower Q, to make it equal to K, how do I lower Q? If this is my expression for Q at any point, I lower that by get, making the, not, the uh, numerator smaller and the denominator larger. The only way to do that is to get rid of some NH3 and to make more N2 and H2. And the only way to do that is if the reaction proceeds to the left. So this is also going to proceed to the left towards the reactants. Let's look at C. Q is going to be 13 squared over 27 times 82 raised to the third power. If you do that math, you get 1.13 times 10 to the minus 5. Now let's compare this Q with the K value. This Q is actually smaller by, not by much, but about three times or so smaller than that value. So in this case, my Q is smaller than K. I want to make Q equal to K. So how do I increase Q? By looking at this expression. I increase Q by increasing the numerator and decreasing the denominator. How do I do that? How do I increase this number? I increase it by making more NH3 and I decrease the denominator by getting rid of N2 and H2. The only way I can do that is if the reaction proceeds forward in the forward direction to make more product. Therefore, this reaction is going to proceed towards the right, making more product. And then let's look at the last part, D, where Q, the value for Q is going to be 51 squared divided by 47 div multiplied, well, these two are multiplied, 51 is still divided by 107 raised to the third power. This value now comes out to be 4.52 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, now let's compare it to the K value. My Q value is exactly the same as the K value. So Q is equal to K, which means I am at equilibrium. And therefore, both the forward rate and the reverse rate are equal to each other. The reaction is not going to proceed in either direction. I mean, it's 
the reactions are happening simultaneously but at the same rate at the same speed so it, there's no net gain on the product or on the reactant or the reactant nor on the product side because my Q is equal to K and I'm at equilibrium. This is how you do these types of problems. Make sure that you understand this is the easiest one, that Q is equal to K, to K, then you're at equilibrium and you have no net gain on either side. The reactions are still continuing, the forward and the reverse rate, but they're equal to each other, so there is no net change in concentrations. If Q is less than K, then the reaction is going to proceed to make more product because that is how I increase K is if the top number increases and the bottom decreases, which they do only if I'm proceeding to the right towards making more product. And then Q, when Q is larger than K, it's the opposite. This is too large of a number. To decrease Q, I need to decrease the numerator and increase the denominator and I do that by getting rid of my product and making reactants so the reverse reaction is going to proceed I'm going to the reaction is going to shift towards the left okay if you have any questions please let me know